to escape the great British winter, here I am over 5,000 miles away in sunny LA. I mean, <laughs> what the hell's going on here? I mean, I was driving up this road before and there was literally three cars, one in the middle of the road, two by the side, by this mudslide. It's almost like people here, they're not used to heavy rain. So when it comes, they literally don't know how to drive, they don't know what to do with themselves. But um, I have to say, even by UK standards, this is really dangerous. There's mudslides, there's flash flooding as you can see. You know, literally the hills are coming down into the road. So the road surfaces are slippy. People are hitting potholes because the water's so deep. I thought it was coming here for a bit of sun. What's happened? What's happened to the world? Anyway, as you know, the main task in hand is to get Dan's 190SL finished and in a few days time, there's a show that he wants to take it to. So I've really got my work cut out. But um, fingers crossed, we'll get stuck in and we'll get it done. And if you want to get up to speed on this restoration so far, just simply click on the link above to take you to all the episodes. Okay, so this is the battery that Dan's bought for the car. Um, I just managed to buy one of these. It's like the original battery cover from Vintage Euro Parts. Um, but for me, that doesn't really cut it for me. So, I've just been to see a guy called Jose. And he's down at Hollywood Batteries. And I've just purchased this. And look at that. This off. He sort of specialises in old style batteries. Now for me, that's like a million times better. Look at that. That looks the part, the old style. I can rip that off. I can stick a Varta sticker over there. But um, I just think that looks the part. Don't know about you. So I'm really pleased. Well, that doesn't work. So once again, a bit of improvisation. That'll do. I want to see that oil pipe's finally arrived. The correct one at last. Remember it stopped us in our tracks at the 11th hour last time. And complemented by a nice new set of radiator hoses. Some nice fresh antifreeze. No leaks. It's good. Next up, to get rid of those tired anti-roll bar bushes or drop links. So it's out with the old and in with the new. So this is the old one and this is the new. Now so often you'll see the drop link rubbers replaced, but you'll find these ones are often overlooked. Out of laziness, I suppose. 
And just look at these side by side. See the way the hole on the one on the left is a lot bigger. And just look at them drop link rubbers. Look how compressed they are compared to the new ones. Scrap. Clean up the surrounding areas that I'm working on as I go along as usual. And I can't help but think this car would really benefit from a dry ice clean underneath. It would just complete the job and have it looking like brand new. Maybe an idea for the future, eh? Oh, the joys of working solo. You've got to use your imagination, haven't you? That one done. Round to the other side. Well, see that little dab of yellow paint? That's to show it's being checked at the factory and talked up to the correct setting. You wouldn't get that at Ford or Jaguar. Yeah, look at this, guys. Talk about Frankenstein's monster. I just polished that up, you know. It'll all come out. It looks fine. After a quick sandwich, it's back to that creaking old suspension. Now that's what you want. Look at the state of that. So I'm using Bilsteins, just like the ones on the front. Keep it a matching set. I think they're the best anyway. So before I put this spare wheel back, 
now the shocks are done just come and take a look at this now this is the difference between a UK car and one that's in a warmer climate I mean look at that it's like brand new the floor pans where the spare wheel goes if this is a UK car now that will be completely rotten out instead it's like brand new look at that I'm just taking a look at these wipers. Um, there's a lot of play in them, as you can see, and they're as sloppy as anything. Now, you've got your wiper matrix inside there, and I basically got a cog at the bottom here, which, in turn, as they move across like this, it moves that wiper back and forth. Now, it could be quite possible that this is worn, and if so, I'll just fit the brand new ones. Um, but I won't know until I get everything out. Um, I fitted a new wiper to this side, but still, it's just got no tension in it. Something's not quite right. Now, it could be that it's where in the actual motor itself, but um, I'll get to the bottom of it. Let's take this off first. Tiny little nut. The size of that. And I thought it wasn't very tight, was it? But anyway, all this is for later, because today is the last Sunday in the month, and that means only one thing. The Cars and Coffee Classic Car Meet at Griffith Park. So let's get down there and take a look, shall we? See if there's anything of interest. There's a nice Cobra. Looks like a kit. I don't think it's original. And there's a Ford Anglia. Now this is a long way from home. These were like the bread and butter cars in the 60s and the 70s back in the UK. Straight off the production line, a Ford Liverpool. You know, the last one of these I ever saw was at Liverpool Museum. And it was the last one ever to be built and it was in like a bottle green. Nice to meet you, This is a, a 49 Hudson Commodore which was the top of the line car. And they made them in six cylinder and eight cylinder. Yeah. And this is an eight. And is, is that original paint? It's not original paint, it's close to it. Uh, it's probably the respray on this thing's older than me. Yeah, so. Well, I won't ask your age, <laughs> but you must be really old. I must be really, really <laughs> old, yeah, it's true. Basically I got this on eBay for a dollar. Not kidding you. It had been mislabeled on eBay as a manual, a book. And what it has is a manual transmission. So they put it on eBay as Hudson Commodore manual. And I was looking for a Hudson Commodore manual because I have another one of these cars that needs a lot of work. And this thing was on for a dollar and I won. Wow. Well, I paid the even the more. manual's worth a dollar, isn't it? Yeah, I paid more than a dollar for it. The guy wouldn't sell it to me. And then eventually I said, what do you want for it? So my dad came to this country in 1950 from Czechoslovakia. So his sponsor was his rich uncle and his uncle liked Hudson's. So my dad was driving with the uncle and the water pump gave out. So they went into the Hudson dealer and the uncle said, how much for a new water pump? And they said, yeah, it's like, you know, 50 bucks, but you have to wait four days. So he said, give me a new one. So he gave him a new one, just like this. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, he still had that car. And I remember, you see the little back window there? Yeah. 
I remember sitting in the back seat and popping that window out and going, this is great. I love this. And so I always wanted to have one, which is why I have the Junker and now I have a good one too. So this was, what's the story? It was just sitting in a garage and people needed to clear it out or what? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, this car originally came from Indiana. Yeah. People moved to California to Rialto, like 1960, something like that. They drove the car out here and then they put it in a garage and they left it. And what kind of state was the engine in? Did it start okay or, I mean, did everything have to be Luck done, the fuel tank cleaned out? And it's got a new fuel tank because the yeah. old one was rotten. Luckily, I didn't try to start it because um, these cars still have a splasher motor. So there's oil and the oil pump pumps the oil into a tray and the rods come around, hit the tray yeah. and splash the oil around. Yeah. Well, the sludge was into the tray. So the rods block. Oh, it was terrible. Yeah. So I had to pull the pan and on this car, in order to pull the pan, you have to drop the whole front end out which isn't that bad, it's not as scary as it sounds. So we pulled the pan, rebuilt the carburetor, rebuilt the generator, did the starter, did the brakes, went through the whole car. Yeah. And I haven't done anything to it cosmetically. Well, that's good that you had the foresight to do that because you could have ruined it straight away, couldn't you? Oh, yeah. I, if, if I had tried to start it, the guy that I got it from, he said, well, I was gonna try to start it, but I don't have a battery. And I went, okay, that's good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, because spot of luck there. It, it would have been done. It would have seized. This this car, kind of car would have been owned by a really a really affluent family, wouldn't it? No, this is like sure. a, this is a middle class car. These they, well, that's affluent to me. Well, okay. <laughs> it, it wasn't a poor person's car. No, mm. it wasn't a rich person's car. If you wanted a rich car, you'd get like a Buick or a Cadillac or something like yeah. that. Could this was a car for. They used to call these cars cars for retired engineers because they're so well engineered. Um, I don't know if you, I don't, I'm not sure how familiar you are with American cars of the period. Not very familiar. Well, they're trucks. Yeah. They're like 1920s trucks, but if you feel the steering wheel here. Yeah, power steering. It's not power steering, but Isn't it feels it? like it. Wow. No, I was, I was watching you backing out and, and putting it in this position before and I thought, that's gotta be power steering. You would do it like this. Here, I'll open the, yeah, I'll open the hood for you. This has what was called, it was a Hudson thing, it's called center point steering. Wow. So it's a, a flathead, flathead. straight eight motor. Um, and you, it's difficult to see, but if you look down in there, you'll see that there's, the steering column comes down and yep. it doesn't go to the suspension. It goes to a point midway through the car. That way you have your even. Balance, yeah. Yeah which most cars don't have. So a car of this vintage is like just a real pig to drive and these are wonderful. When you say you went right through it, Paul, what did you do to the engine? Oh, I had to put a new water jacket on it because that one was rotted, a new carburetor. But uh, apart from that, the, the lump was okay, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's still, it could use a valve job. It's a little rattly. Yeah. Um, you know, it always, it's an old car. You could probably put a little bit of treatment in there to take it, make it quieter. You just have to adjust the valves yeah. and probably give them a valve grind. Yeah. And this thing hasn't had any major attention probably since the Built 60s. to last in those days, weren't they? Not like today. They, didn't know, they didn't know any now. better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they hadn't figured out how to make them cheap yet. These are the kind of cars I saw growing up in movies. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, I've always admired them from afar, but I don't really know too much about them. Old American cars of this period, they're not the best, but they're probably the most fun. That's a piece of engineering, isn't it? They really were, they really were. I mean, if you look at how these things are put together, it's kind of impressive. What's, um, what's the cable for, Paul? That's the windshield that's wipers. Heater. No, oh, windshield the wipers. Blankets. See, there's the vacuum oh, windshield wiper incredible. motor. And, and it's not gonna, it's really you can kind of see So what happens is, um, it's a, so yeah. this is a vacuum motor. Yeah. Like I said, this is an American perversion that they used vacuum wipers. Nobody else did. So when you turn on the wiper, it opens the valve, it sucks vacuum from the intake. The arm goes like that, and there's the pulleys, and it's, it's monkey motion. But, you know, they designed it in probably 1930, and they never changed it. Probably designed by German scientists, wasn't it? <laughs> After the war. Nu nuclear physicists. Probably a lot of truth in that, actually. Um, this was... They all came over here, didn't they? They did. 
that he did. That's that's I the old. He, I think they worked as Hollywood set builders to begin with, and they're all given new identities. <laughs> you know, allegedly. <laughs> they put him right to work in the rockets. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, Paul, let you get on. Thanks yeah. Very thank much. you. Nice to meet you. And there's a gang of my old friends. Remember the 220 SE Cabriolet I did in an earlier episode? There's the proud owner. What a beauty. The creme de la creme of American automobiles. Liverpool forever. Oh well, back to the grind. And you can see here where a previous bots job has been done, where they've drilled through the trim and screwed into the door, probably because of a couple of broken clips. And now to rectify the upside down bumper, remember with the drain holes at the top? And of course, with rusty bolts, nothing ever comes easy. None of them ever want to play ball. those captive nuts that suddenly become uncaptive. I've literally got no bolts, so I have to sift through a drawer and find something that I can make do. So what was just meant to be a straightforward job, after what seemed like a full day's work, we got there in the end.
new rubber seals, reconnect the electrics, and because this piece has been facing underneath, it's suffered from years of moisture from the exhaust, but this should clean up nicely. There you go. And then we're around to the front. And you can see where someone's cocked this up with a bit of filler. So this needs to be dressed before the rubber can fit. Now, as soon as I have to drop the other side of the bumper to do the other overrider, I've just noticed there's a chrome finishing missing off the front on one side, so I've managed to order one from a guy in Milwaukee, and that's in the post. So I'll leave the bumper off till this is fitted, then I'll refit the whole thing. Now I know these all seem like really bitty jobs, but in my mind, the jobs are just have to be done. So I'm just gonna get on with them, and I promise you in a few days time, you'll really see this car come to fruition in all its entirety. Thank you for watching this episode of Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you all next time.